Okay, it's about time we have some therapy right now. I thought it would be fun to talk about in this video all of the things that I have regretted in my lifetime. I know there's people out there that live their life with no regrets, but unfortunately, I am not one of them. I have made many mistakes in my lifetime, and now looking back, I wish I had a video like this that I could have watched that really would have made me reflect on certain decisions that I have made. Unfortunately for me, I am not a very decisive person, so because of that, I make it up for being really impulsive. A horrible trait I hate that I'm like this I really scramble in between decisions so then I end up just making a rush decision and then when I look back on it I'm like why <laughs> why did I do that why <laughs> maybe this video might inspire you to maybe really think about some certain decisions we really super vulnerable with you today and I tell you guys some things that I probably have never told anyone if you guys want to know all of my mistakes I've made for the last 31 years of my life then keep on watching okay we're gonna start off on the more superficial stuff and then later on in this video we'll have the deep heartfelt heart to heart you know <laughs> the first regret that I made was buying this bag this is the first and only designer bag that I have bought for myself I bought it about maybe a year ago now and I probably wore it for a total of like six times I bought this bag for almost two thousand pounds I got it in Paris honestly I have not been able to make use out of this bag it is just such a small bag <laughs> I wish I would have gone with something a little bit more practical I liked it at the time because you know you can wear it like a little shoulder strap you can wear it as a crossbody what do I have in here at the moment I've got a lip gloss the blotting papers and then literally by the time I put my phone in there I can barely close it I just don't find value in a lot of materialistic designer things I'm not even making use out of this bag like it would be completely different if I bought a bag and I use it every single day but because this bag is just sitting there on the shelf and I barely use it I'm just like why the hell did I think I deserved such a nice bag when I barely even use it maybe I should just leave it up here so it can be like on display but yeah moral of the story is if I could go back in time I would have told myself to really think about why you're making these big purchases is it because you genuinely want to do it or are you trying to impress other people okay next we're going to talk about some appearance things you know some superficial things that I've done on this pursuit to make me feel prettier I have no clue I feel like looking back there was a time in my life where I was just so obsessed with the way that I looked every time you upload a video on the internet there are people that are not so nice and they can pick apart your appearance they can pick apart the way you talk even watching back you pick apart things that you probably would have never noticed if you wasn't on camera now after going through therapy and learning about that side of me more I definitely realized that I had a little bit of a complex it was definitely coming from a place of insecurity definitely coming from a place of comparison I felt like I really went through that pursuit of trying to find the way to get a perfect body the way to make me look a certain way and I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you guys and say that I'm all natural I am definitely not I still love a little tweak a little enhancement here and there but there was definitely a time in my life where I just felt like I was never happy with the way that I looked and I'm definitely coming to that space where I just feel like I don't need all of this stuff to make me feel happy I wish I would have gave myself more grace because there was a time in my life where I was like super snatched and super skinny and even then I wasn't even happy with my body <laughs> just being online and looking at other people you just feel like you want what they have but really you should be happy with what you have you know okay let me elaborate about the things that I do have regrets on and maybe looking back I wouldn't have done one would have definitely been my eyebrows my eyebrows are tattooed on I can't really change the shape I can't really do the laminated fluffy brow I just can't be that that girl that you know just does a little bit of eyebrow gel and call it a day this is my brows it's just stuck like this and I probably have to just carry on my life even when I'm 50 with this eyebrow shape I had my eyebrows done when I was very young it's very common in Asian culture to get your eyebrows get your eyeliner tattooed get your lips tattooed and I actually got my eyebrows tattooed when I was 16 I actually went with my mum and my older sister to Vietnam and I got it done and I remember when I got up I looked in the mirror and I was like I hated it and I just started crying straight away it was wonky it was round I just didn't like the shape of it at all I just wish at the time I would have just grew up my eyebrows and went to a professional and just got them threaded into a nice shape now I'm stuck with these 
tattooed eyebrows and it's just not the vibe. Another regret that I got done was I got my hairline tattooed. I want to set photos of what my hairline looked like here. Thankfully, I've actually had it lasered off. At the time, I actually got a DM and someone was like, have you ever looked at getting your hairline tattooed? And I was like, oh my God, I have a huge forehead. Let me go and get a hairline tattoo. The first time that I got it done, I loved it. But then I actually went for my second round where they top it up and I ended up going to another girl and she was awful. It was literally like thick lines and it was so awful when i parted my hair on like a side parting the lines wouldn't match the parting and i had to use foundation to cover it up i'm going to be completely transparent with you guys right now as an influencer you get invited to do so many procedures for free you just get so many emails that come in and it, it can be so easy for you just to be like oh it's free let's go and do it but don't do it guys okay do not do it okay while we're on the subject i really wanted to bring up the the whole conversation about filler and surgeries probably one of the most common questions that I get asked is do you got your surgeries and all of your fillers and stuff that you had done recently I've actually had a lot of my fillers dissolve I had all of my chin my jaw dissolve I am so much happier with the way that I look when I look back at old videos and old photos I was like girl I literally look like a hexagon <laughs> Now, in hindsight, looking back, I definitely overdid it with the filler. If anyone has gotten filler before, you would know it is very easy to fall into this trap of feeling like you need to get more and more. At first, you start off with only half a syringe, you know, a 0 0.5, and then you come out all swollen. You're like, oh my God, what did I do? Then the next day you look back and you're like, oh, I kind of like it. Two weeks goes by and you're like, oh my God, it went down. Like. I need more and hence that's why you have so many people that have these big old lips that have a big old cheekbones now and a big old chin and honestly like if I could go back I wish I would have told myself to literally just do tiny tiny increments I always feel like people always look best as close as they are to how they naturally look and now looking back I have some crazy videos of me where I had this massive chin and this massive jaw looking back now I'm like oh my god you look crazy girl like why didn't no one tell me <laughs> Okay, next subject I want to talk about is the exact reason why I have so many plushies in my room right now. <laughs> it is not prioritising friendships when I was younger. These are basically my friends. I have never been that person that has had a best friend. Honestly, this was a big subject why I actually went to therapy. I have always craved that feeling of I wish I had a best friend. I wish I had like close friends that I'll talk to every single day and we meet up every single week and we just catch up on life. But for some reason, I just find it really hard to make friends, especially the older that you get. It is even harder to meet people. I realise that I'm not a good friend myself. After talking to a therapist, I realised that all of my projections that I wish I had this, I wish I had a friend that messaged me every day, I wish I had a friend that would just be caring and thinks about me and, you know, send me funny memes and stuff like that. But really, I know that I don't do that for other people. So how do I expect them to be my friend when I'm not a good friend myself? I am not that person that messages you every day. I am a very low maintenance friend. But secretly, I do want that high maintenance friend where we just banter and we chat every single day and someone I can call when I'm feeling really shit and really down. Also, I do feel like because I've been in a relationship since I was 16 years old, I definitely put friendships and girlfriend relationships on the back burner. Like, I was that friend that ditched all my friends for my boyfriend. And obviously, looking back, that is not good. That is awful. That is the reason why you don't have no friends, bitch because you was that girl that put all your eggs in one basket aka your boyfriend and I just didn't feed all of the other plants in my life. I can't say I regret it too much because we have built an amazing life together and we've been together for 15 years now and you know I love him so much and there definitely was times where I was really frustrated with Grant like why can't you do this why can't you do that. Now looking back it's because I expected him to be everything. I expected him to be my best friend. I expected him to be my boyfriend, my lover, work partner, house mate i expected so much from him and you are gonna have different interests it's up to you to kind of feed that cup from other relationships in your life and honestly after going to therapy that's when i realized that i can't put so much pressure on one person my therapist actually said that she met her friends after she had kids and she made her mummy friends and i'm just 
holding out hope that maybe I might have some mummy friends, you know, that are really there for me. Okay, this next one I feel so strongly about and it's probably one of the biggest regrets that I have here on this list. And it is mixing business and pleasure. <laughs> why, Tree? Why, you damn bitch? I do not recommend working with family, working with friends. It is not recommended, guys. Me and Grant work together. We've worked together for almost like seven years now. And honestly, it is probably one of the hardest, but at the same time, most rewarding relationship. Obviously, we live together and we're building a life together. So it does make sense for us to really push through all of our arguments. But, 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 big caveat, do not work with friends. I feel like I am such a forgiving person. I can be quite naive sometimes. I always try to see the best in someone and I have been taken advantage of. When money is involved, you really see people's true colours. I've been going back and forth for the last three years trying to get my money back trying to get the person to message me they're not even replying back to me looking back and feeling like oh my god i thought this person was my friend and they do not care about me when money is involved is like the most heartbreaking feeling ever if you are ever gonna work with a family member if you're ever gonna work with a friend make sure there are contracts in place make sure that you do things properly that is one of the biggest regrets that i've ever done just don't work with family guys like if you can, try to avoid it. Okay, this next one I'm really sad to even say because I don't even want to admit it to myself, but I low-key regret buying my house. I wish I would have done more research. When buying my house, I was really trying to get a house before a specific time so that I can get free stamp duty, which was an incentive that the government was giving out in the UK. I don't know if I rushed into buying this house because I did look at over 40 houses, but at the time when I was buying a house, I was living at home. Me and Graham were sharing one small tiny bedroom. That was my workplace. That was where we slept. That was where we ate. We just basically lived in one tiny council house and we shared a tiny room. And at the time when I was looking for a house, I was like, I need need a makeup room, I need a study, I need a walk-in wardrobe, I need this, I need that. Looking back now, I do not know why me and Gwang needed such a big house. <laughs> Obviously, it sounds so good in the grand scheme of things that, like, oh my god, you have so much space, you have a huge garden. But guys, having a big house like this comes with big bills. <laughs> I also didn't realise that your monthly payments change every two or five years luckily we are in a position where i can you know work a bit harder and you know make some more youtube videos and accept some more brand deals but all of these things i did not take into consideration when buying such a big house i just felt like i needed this to kind of make me feel more secure and more like oh my god i accomplished something but honestly i could have been happier buying a smaller house that was much closer to london instead of buying this huge detail house in the middle of nowhere i will never buy an apartment ever again unfortunately i wish i would have invested more in like a fixer upper and then maybe like flip the house instead but yeah okay one last one to end it on i wish i would have put more time and effort into my personal development sooner if you guys didn't know i'm currently on this journey of personal development it kind of started off last year when i started to go to the gym because i was going down this spiral of being in this rabbit hole where i felt like i was living for the weekend during the week i was just plodding along doing the bare minimum and then during the weekend i couldn't wait to go out and see my friends and go partying and go to festivals and stuff like that. That was probably the year that I had the most fun in my life. That was the year that I probably put myself first instead of work all the time. But then I felt like I went the opposite direction where I wasn't focused on what really matters, which is my career and my long-term goal, my long-term plan. Now I feel like I'm more back on track. Waking up early, doing something that I know is better for me and my mental health and my body and my soul in the long run that just unlocks this new world of personal development 
I know you guys have heard the story so many times before, but I've come from an immigrant household. I've lived in council houses my whole life, and I just knew that I did not want to go down that path. It is so easy for people to be really complacent in life, to complain and to be like, woe is me, and to just plod along with life. But for me, I just know that I have a bigger purpose. I have a bigger goal. I have places that I want to be. I have milestones that I want to reach. And the only way that I can reach it is to be consistent and is to be disciplined. So yeah, I started off the journey by going to the gym and then this year I have started looking into my mental development as well. Last year it started off by going to the gym and then I started couples therapy, you know, me and Graham went through a really rough patch. And then we've also done solo therapy as well. i done rapid transformational therapy and honestly it just like unlocked the gates for me. So at the start of this year I put on my goals that I want to wake up at 5am every day and I want to adopt the habits of of successful people. I listen to a lot of podcasts, I'm reading a lot of books about the millionaire mindset. How are people successful? What are their daily habits that they do to achieve what they have achieved in their life? The one book that's changed the game for me was The Morning Miracle. I would highly recommend to read that book if you are looking into personal development. I would love to do a video like deep diving into like my morning routine and things that have really helped me change my mindset and the books that I've been reading and stuff like that. That is it for this video guys. I really wanted to just talk from my heart. This video was not scripted at all, clearly. I just really want to let everything out and just have that relationship with you guys. Where I am in my life, I'm probably the happiest and probably at my most mental clarity in my head. I love you guys so much. I hope this video really does help someone else out there and does inspire you to just take that first step into the person that you need to be. Need more friends. These are the only friends I have. And you, Rolo. You're my friend. Are you trying to sell the banana? Okay, we have um, a set destroyer over here. This was put here for an ambiance, Rolo. By the way, if you liked this makeup look, I just filmed it in last week's video. So go check it out. I tried all the K-Beauty makeup. Like, I know you've been staring at my blinding highlighter this whole time. Okay. I even go to the gym. Okay. But the rolls are still here. It's probably because I haven't stopped eating the snacks and the crisps. They do say that 80% of your dream body is made in the kitchen. <laughs>